Hi everyone. In the last video, we covered implementation of synchronous and asynchronous reset design techniques. We also covered their advantage and disadvantage and then which is the preferred reset design technique used in most of the SOC designs. So there we concluded that asynchronous reset assertion and synchronous deassertion is basically basically preferred technique used in SOC designs. So if you have not gone through that video, I would recommend you to first go through that video so that you will understand this particular video in a better way. So in the previous video, we concluded that what is the problem with asynchronous reset assertion and deassertion. So we saw that there is no problem during the asynchronous reset assertion because even if the reset assertion happens near the active clock age and if the flip-flop moves to a meta-stable state, state, the flip-flop flop remains in meta-stable state only for a short period of time because the reset is supposed to be applied for a quite long time and eventually the flip-flop will get into the reset state. So during reset assertion, there is no problem, but asynchronous reset deassertion has a problem. If the deassertion happens near the active clock age, or we will call it recovery, uh, recovery and removal window, then the flip-flop might go into the meta-stable state. So as you can see in this waveform, our reset this is this is a active reset signal, and the reset deassertion happens here, which is basically near the rising edge of this clock. And as per the flip-flop architecture specification, the reset signal should be stable before T recovery time of the rising edge of the clock signal. And similarly, it should be stable for T recovery, T removal time after the rising edge of the clock. So if there is a, any change in the reset signal during this window, the flip-flop might go into meta-stable state. So now we know that for our reset design technique, we have to use asynchronous reset assertion and synchronous deassertion. And it should be such that this problem of meta stability can be mitigated. So in order to have this design implemented, we have to make sure or we have to introduce something or some circuit which will remove this problem of meta stability during the reset asynchronous reset deassertion so here comes the solution of this problem and the solution of this problem is nothing but a vdd based reset synchronizer so this is the vdd based syn reset synchronizer here we are going to see how this circuit can avoid our an asynchronous reset deassertion meta stability problem so if you see here this is our asynchronous reset signal and instead of directly applying this signal to the reset pin of our design flip flops this is our design here and suppose this is a flip flop so instead of the asynchronous reset signal applying directly to the flip flop reset pin we have introduced two flip flops here the input of the first flip flop is nothing but connected to the vdd that is power supply and the output is connected to the second flip flop input pin and the second flip flop output pin is basically connected to all the reset pins of our design flip flop so if you see here during the reset assertion so whenever the reset gets asserted this flip flop will get reset this flip flop will also get reset and once it gets reset the output suppose this is active low reset so this output will become zero and this will reset all our design flip flops now what happens during the reset deassertion so during reset deassertion this flip flop the input of this flip flop is connected to one vdd let's suppose this is one and now during reset state this input this this point is zero and this is also zero so when the reset deassertion happens basically the clock signal of this flip flop takes control and now the data will be either the data input d data will be propagated to the output of this flip flop or the flip flop will be in the reset state so if the reset deassertion has taken place then at active clock age the d input will be propagated to the flip-flop output and in the next clock age now in the first clock age this has become one 
and this is again zero because this out this input was zero at first um, clock age. So let's see. This is our clock signal, and this is our reset deassertion. So this is active low reset. So let's deassertion is deassertion will happen like this. This is deassertion. So at this clock age. The flip flop of one output will become one. So here the flip flop of output will become one. But the flip flop of two output, register two output is here, it is going to be zero only. But in the next clock age, since now the flip flop of one output is one, so here the output of the second flip flop will also become one. And now this is our master reset signal which will be going to our uh, design. So this is the scenario one of our synchronizers functionality now suppose there is one case where the flip flop one register one flip flop can go into meta stable state suppose the reset deassertion happens near this active clock age suppose this is the recovery time and the reset deassertion happens in this window itself so if the reset deassertion happens in this window itself the flip flop cannot determine its output value, output state, and it will be meta stable. It will be unknown value. But the register two output will be zero only. It will not go into meta stable state because at this clock age, the flip flop two input is zero itself. That is a known value, and output is also zero. So the zero only will be propagating to the output. That means there is no reason the flip flop two can go into meta stable state. Okay. So now at this point, if if the reset deassertion happens near the active edge of the clock signal, the flip flop one can go into meta stable state, but flip flop two will never go into meta stable state. Now by the time of the next clock edge, the flip flop one output will settle. So it ha it, it it will get enough time to settle before the next clock edge. So in starting it is meta stable unknown, but finally it will be settling to zero and zero or one. Right, so there is no scenario where flip flop two can go into meta stable state. So now with this and, and the flip flop two output is basically feed to our design flip flops. So this circuit is basically we can say that it can avoid the meta stability problem caused by asynchronous reset deassertion. So hope this reset synchronizer and its functionality is clear. If you have any doubts, please do not hesitate to write down in the comment section. Now let's see one another important concept which is reset tree. So let's see what is reset tree and why we need it and how do we implement it. So as you saw in the reset synchronizer implementation, here we have our this master reset which is going to all the design flip-flops present in our design. So basically, if there are thousands of flip flops available, then this particular net is basically driving all the reset pins of the all the flip flops. So what is the problem with this? So there is a fundamental problem with this. Let's understand it with some example of an inverter. Let's have let's see that we have this inverter circuit and this inverter output is basically driving some load capacitor. So if this capacitor value increases, if this capacitor value increases, then this the waveform, if you see the waveform at this point or the signal at this point, the performance of the signal at this point basically gets degraded. What does that mean? Is suppose I have a this pulse high to low pulse at input of this inverter. So what will be the output pulse? The output pulse is going to be low to high. Now the transition of this output pulse is basically different on the load which it is driving. If this capacitance value is high, the charge, the, the, the time to charge this capacitor from value 0 to what is the maximum uh, value of the voltage, the time, if the capacitor value is more, the time it takes to charge this capacitor will be more. That means uh, the slope of the transition time is basically decreasing. So if the slope gets decreases, the transition time is basically increases. And this is not expected in the design. The slope of this signal, the slope should be approaching to the 90 degree or the signal should be perfect, ideally expected as perfect square wave. 
so if this reset signal or this reset particular this net is driving so many uh, flip flops uh, basically it is driving the reset field of lots of flip flops here so there will be lots of loading effect at this particular pin so if there is lots of loading effect at this particular pin the signal quality is basically degrading and that will cause basically more transition time and then it will basically affect the recovery and removal timing checks so we will study what is recovery and removal timing checks we have already touched a little bit here the recovery time is nothing but the time before the clock edge at which the reset signal should be stable and removal time is after the clock edge the time after the clock edge for which the reset signal should be stable so if there is more transition time that means the reset signal might get delayed and it can transition in this window that will cause the reset this this basically this timing violation reset and uh, recovery and removal timing violation so we do not expect a single reset net to drive all our design flip flops and hence we have to design a reset pin where we basically distribute all the, distribute the fan out in different different uh, blocks so here we will insert some buffer so buffers are inserted to improve the drive strength of this uh, of this signal so this reset signal here suppose this is like this with this buffer it will improve the drive strength it will make the transitions short here we will see that our reset signal is basically fan out into three different signals and then it will be going to different different curves in our design so basically this will avoid the loading effect at the reset net and eventually it will help to improve our recovery and removal timing constraints so i hope the need of reset tree and how it is implemented in the design is clear if you have any doubts please write down in the comment section also if you like this video please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe this channel so that you will get notified as soon as i upload the next video Thank you very much.